Hi, it's Susan from www.craftingchaos.co.uk. I did a video a few days ago showing how to make pebble flowers. As you can see, it's very pretty. And I thought I would um, do a video just showing you how we can make that up into a lovely card. So there's a card on my blog that I'm always getting asked about. Um, and I'm always asked what embossing folder it is. And it's not an embossing folder, so I thought that I would show you today how it's actually created. So I've got a piece of um, double-sided Century Pearl cardstock in fresh white, because I'm also going to use this to make my own card base. And I've got my Ultimate Pro from Crafters Companion, which is one of my favourite tools. So all I'm going to do is decide where I want my flower to be positioned. So I'm going to go for it around there. So I'm going to put my fingernail in that part and get it hooked in, a ch in the channel. Now you can do this with any scoring board, it doesn't have to be a Crafters Companion one. And then I'm just going to score to that fingernail and then keep slightly turning it, keeping your finger within that channel, that's what keeps it in place. Now, if you come out of your channel, which I'm going to do deliberately, so don't think that I'm really bad at it. As you can see, I came out of the channel a bit there. That's absolutely fine. It really adds to the card when it gets finished. So you'll see what I mean as we continue. And because you're not going to see your actual join, it doesn't matter if someone comes to the door and you move your finger out of the channel piece. You can just pick it up again because your flower is going to hide exactly where it is. So I'm just going to complete that where I did that. So we just keep turning around. Now you don't have to make your pieces meet. If you don't keep your finger in your channel you'll end up like there how it went into a different place. It just adds to the effect and I will be going back after this first round and just putting in some random bits and pieces just to add character. And it is a card that ends up being really stunning. People always ask me what embossing folder I've used and what brand it is and no one can ever believe it when I say actually I did it myself with my scoring board so if you want a really simple card that's really elegant as well this is the way to go it'd make a brilliant sympathy card or um, a wedding card because no one likes making sympathy cards obviously I say just continue around. I said it doesn't matter if you do lose your fingernail from the channel because you can just put it straight back in again. It seems like ages that I'm doing this so I'll probably speed this up on the video, although actually I might not because it's probably good for you to see how quick it actually is because although for me it seems like it's ages because I'm very conscious of the fact that people are watching this. It's not actually that long. So it ends up looking like a starburst effect almost and you can do it starting from the centre or the corner or wherever you want it to begin from and you can also do it different ways there's other cards that I've done that you'll see up on the blog where I've done it just on certain parts to create like a band effect and it really looks effective so I'm getting to the end of my first level now And if you don't have fingernails, I know some people say that they can't do it because of that. Try a pin. I think that I haven't done it that way myself, but I think that that would work just as effectively. Just make sure you're going into the right channel is where your nail is. So as you can see, that's all 
it's gold. So now I'm going to add some that are just a bit out of place just to make it look a bit different. So I'm going to have my finger in the channel, but I'm deliberately going to go out of it. It just adds a bit more interest to your design. Well, and it does make people think, well, how have they done that? It must be a folder because if they've done it themselves, it would be perfect. Plus, I did it accidentally the first time and it looked quite good. So then I was like, oh, I'll do that again. nearly there oh, I'll do one last one there right so that's the way that it looks now so now I'm going to go ahead and add some glitter into some of the channels so I've got just a bit of card to go underneath just to catch it and I've got a quickie glue pen so I'm just going to scribble a little bit to start that off running that's it and then in about every other channel or just as randomly as you like you don't really have to be very precise with it I'm just going to add some glue and then I've got some glitter here and um, this is a mix of all different kinds of clear iridescent glitter I think it's mainly stamps by Chloe's ice cream sundae um, but there's also ones in there by tonic and cosmic shimmer and stuff because I'm a bit of a glitter phobe I've just realised glitter fork means the absolute opposite of what I was trying to say but you know so I'll just keep going around and adding those lines and again it doesn't matter if you come out of your channel because it just adds to the overall see it's really starting to take effect now so just a few more channels and you don't even have to do the whole channel you can just pick little bits of it to do it's all about just a highlighting adding a bit of interest to it I think the fact that it's imperfect is actually what makes it perfect to look at in a weird way. I find it easier to have a big box of glitter like this because it means I don't get it everywhere like I do normally. So there you can see. It's very sparkly. And I'm just going to add one little bit there because that bit looks like it's got nothing there. Right, so I've got that done. I'm going to take off the extra glitter of the card blank. Put that on one side. So then that is the finished background. So I've got a piece of um, Centura Pearl Snow White to match this, which is double sided. So I'm going to use that to create my card blank. So using my Ultimate Pro, I put it up against the handle, always up against the handle. That's a good tip. And then I can see it's marked half fold A4. So that's what I'm wanting to create. So I'll just score down that line 
I always tend to do it twice and then fold it in towards the handle and then just smooth it down and I do have and there I've got the perfect card blank so I'm going to pop that out of the way and I've already cut a piece of um, crafters companion um, luxury card stock in silver to size so I'm going to use some all purpose glue to stick that on Now the all-purpose glue is really good because it is repositionable which means that I often don't get stuff on straight so it gives me a little bit of manoeuvre and time to get it in place but unfortunately I've decided to bring down one of the bottles that's nearly used. So it's great for sticking paper and paper together. Now, there's a clever way that I figured out my matting and layering for this card, so I'll do another video um, at some point showing you how, with my cutter pillar, how I've managed to make it so that everything is the right dimensions, because it's a really simple trick, because the cutter pillar doesn't have marking on it um, for the different paper sizes. I really find that attaching to a glitter card, the best way to do it is with double-sided tape. So this is Su Kuang double-sided tape, which I think is one of the best ones that's out there. Even though um, the luxury card stock from Crafters Companion doesn't shed, um, it's still quite difficult to try and get a glue to hold it. Um, so just to make sure, I'm gonna use this tape. Peel that off. And see, even someone that does this all the time occasionally has problems getting off their double sided tape. scissors there because I've just managed to get the picture ball stuck to it. So I'm now going to stick this onto the card blank covered in the silver glitter card and just pop that get that positioned a bit better. I did cut these a certain way so that they should be pretty spot on. There you go. Perfect matting and layering. Now a good trick with these flowers is to cut a little bit further down than is actually intended in the stamp because that way you get more movement to your flower. So if I cut near enough to where the center of the flower starts. Then as you can see, I can now add more movement to within those flowers by pulling the petals up. And then using my fingers to bend them over. Now this is Sheena cardstock with the Pebio moon paints on top. You see how that folds? And then some glitter added just for extra effect. And then put, just push them up again. And 
and you have a lovely dimensional flower so just a touch of glue and pop that down there and then I've got some little cosmic shimmer finishing pearls mini pearls so I'm just just to finish it off I'm gonna add a few of them just as a little bit of contrast with the bling and I normally don't add sentiments to my cards because you never know what occasion you're going to need a card for so I like to keep mine blank until I know who I'm going to give it to so this is the finished card now you can either have it this way or you can have it turned around which is what I originally intended and have it that way it's up to personal preference so I would either have a sentiment up in here or up there so as you can see it's a very pretty very sparkly and very detailed card i hope that you have enjoyed the video and um, please subscribe for more thank you for watching bye